Hello folks, welcome back to the channel after a little break over the winter. Today we're going to be talking about hay wagons and how you build them. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but I'm going to show you what I do. So let's get started. Let's work our way up to the actual running gear and the frame itself. To me, this is the most important part of the hay wagon. You can see something in common with three of these wagons, they're all green. That's right. The John Deere running gears are worth their weight in gold. They are some of the best running gears um, you can come across. So I would highly recommend looking for a John Deere running gear. I don't remember what this big guy is down here. He's a real heavy one, but it's a nice one too. There's one thing to look for when you're picking out a running gear, and you'll see that all four of these are the same style. The steering knuckles are behind the front axle. Let's take a closer look. We're down beneath and behind the front tire, and this is actually where the steering happens. It happens behind it. And it's attached to this bar here, it's attached to the tongue, and that turns it. There's a different style of steering you can get. Let's go to the front and I'll show you what those are. Now some hay wagons will have the steering knuckle attachment right there and they'll have these little rods or bars that come out to right here and attach there and that's and that's how they're steering and they're being steered from the front instead of the back and then you have to actually bend those bars to adjust the toe. I have yet to come across a wagon with that style of steering that will not uh, bounce and and wander all over the road when you're uh, pulling it. The reason I like these deer gears so much is because they pull straight and you can pull them fast. Not that I recommend pulling them fast, but I may or may not have pulled one of these gears empty at 60 miles an hour down the road before. When you get those wagons with the tie rods that come out to the front like this, they just follow like crap. Um, so the first thing that's really important when you're picking out a running gear is to make sure it follows because the last thing you want to be able to do is have a full load of hay that you're taking down the road and you can only go 10, 15 miles an hour before that wagon starts to wander too bad like this. All of these wagons, I can pull behind me at 40 miles an hour with a full load if I wanted to um, because they just follow right behind you. If I had wagons that did not follow, I get rid of them, set them on down the road. Now let's talk about the deck itself. All four of my wagons, except for the little John Deere there, are eight by 16. Now that small one is, it's like seven by 15 or something. If I were to do it again, I would make at eight by 18. I can get 100 bales stacked evenly on these if I go five rows tall and then I do them in sections of five and I can get um, four, I can get four stacks going forward. There's a couple feet at the front after the fourth stack but if I just had two more feet of length I could actually get uh, another complete stack and allow me to get 120, um, 120 or 25, whatever it is on the wagon without having to go up to a sixth row. Now, you can see here that the boards can run this way or the boards can run this direction and go side to side instead of front to back. Depending on the way you do it is gonna depend on the way that the bed is framed. So let's start talking about how that bed is made up. Hello. It all starts underneath. Some guys build, uh, overbuild these hilariously. Some guys hilariously underbuild them. But I use treated uh, pine for all of my wagons. Um, some guys like to use solid oak or hardwood. Uh, the treated pine lasts me quite a long time and I'll tell you in a couple minutes what I do to keep that from rotting out on the top. Um, so I use 
two two by tens sistered together and so they are screwed together with big lag bolts every four feet or so down there and uh, at the front of the wagon they are bolted down to the connections on the front axle you can see right there it just goes through now coming back to the rear axle is the important part do not bolt that securely to the axle I just put a chain over the rear uh, boards and run that chain underneath the frame and the reason for doing that is we do not want the running gear to be completely rigid because we want this to be able to have some flex to it so when we're going over bumps and down dips and whatnot in the field this will allow the running gear to actually flex like this if this were bolted solid on all four points your running gear um, would not have any flex to it and you could be uh, tweaking things or breaking boards or something like that. Finally, for the very last thing, you may have noticed the front of my beams are all cut and angled up at the front. This is just so um, when you're moving the tongue, you can move the tongue side to side and lift it up and, and the tongue won't, won't hit anything or have any interference there. So it kind of notches that to get it out of the travel of the tongue. One thing I did not talk about on the running gear is they're adjustable. So the rear running gear starts right there and the front one starts right there. And then there's this big long pipe in the middle. Look at that, you are such a moron. There's this big long pipe in the middle and they are extendable. What I actually did with this one is I had a section welded on there in the middle so I could extend it out even more. And then there's just a bolt that, that goes through the two there and you can make that running gear longer or you can make it shorter if you want to, to get to that um, desired length of wagon you want. Now that we've established, we've got the two big stringers underneath, then we need um, some little stringers on top of those. Now I use four by fours that go all the way across. I do this a little controversially because I put mine every four feet um, you see a lot of wagons with every two, but I tell you what, I have zero problems with these being every four feet and, um, my horse is photobombing the chute here. Um, but my bales aren't very heavy either. They're 40 or 50 pounds. If you were, had really heavy hay and you're loading up your wagon with a bunch, you might want to go in and put your four by fours every, um, two feet i did them every four because it makes it a little cheaper saves a little bit of materials but you still always could go in after the fact and slide another one in there so to connect the four by fours what i do is i take some angle iron and i cut it off and i drill a hole through it and i use big lag bolts and i uh screw them together just like you see and i do that for every single one all the way down the line next just take your two by sixes or you can do two by eights whatever you want to do and then screw them to the top i just simply use um, decking screws and i do three to a board they hold it creaks a lot but they don't break at the front i put a two by four along the front so uh, your feet have something to stand against um, so I don't slide off the front and then I also put one at the rear like you can see right here so that's that kind of bed let's go over and look at the other bed and how I put that one together on this one where the boards are running widthwise instead of lengthwise down below this wagon has one big long piece of angle iron that runs all the way down and it's pretty substantial. And then there's holes drilled into it. And then um, these are carriage bolts that go through every board down into this down below of the angle iron. And then they just bolt it down like that on both sides. I will point out 
the top of these two by uh, two bys right here that that make um, the two beams. I have seen some guys say to put some flashing on top of those so they don't get water and, and chaff and stuff down on there because these will still rot out on the top even though they are treated. Um, honestly, I, I should have done that, but I was just too lazy. However, when I clean off my wagons, I always make sure I get these cleaned out in between here. Now for the spacing. You might notice I've got a ton of spacing in between these boards. This one is over an inch and a half. And on the boards over here, if we come to this guy, it's just about an inch or so. I intentionally leave them wide for several reasons. A, it lets water and stuff drain through because mine sit out and they, they don't live inside. Um, but also it allows all the chaff to fall through there um, as you're bailing, you can kind of kick your feet around and let all the chaff and stuff slide through there. If you get too much chaff built up on your deck, it makes for a really slick wagon. Now, this guy, I bought I bought this one cheap and it already had a deck on it and it's, it's good solid wood and it's really not that rotted. It looks a lot rougher than it is. So I'm not gonna make the investment to replace the deck yet because this one actually works just fine. Now going back to this deck to finish it off, lastly, I just run a two by down along both edges and that is screwed or bolted to the ends of these to keep these, um, give them some support and rigidity to keep them from being too floppy like that. Uh, what I don't have along here is a tow board along the front. You could put one of those if you wanted to, I probably should. Now let's go talk about the back rack. I'm kind of weird in that I like everything to look the same and have a uniform consistent look. So I build all my back racks the same. When all my wagons are running down the road or parked here, I want everything to look good. It has a professional look to it. Um, you don't just look like some guy who's scrapping a bunch of crap together uh, when people are coming to pick up your product. So let's go around to the back of the wagon and see how I'm actually attaching these. There's a number of different ways you can attach the back rack of the wagon, um, but this is the way I do it. Doesn't mean it's the, the best way or the only right way. It's just simply what I do. I take some angle iron and I weld it together and um, one piece bolts to the back here like this and it does the same on the other side. And then this angle iron sticks out, oh, just about, um, just a tad over three and a half inches so that you can just set the two by four straight down into there. Now on these, I actually put some flashing around there so it doesn't um, cut into the board too much, although it, it still might just a little bit. And then when you build your back rack, the very bottom two by four on it is what keeps it from sliding all the way down. So. I've got two two by fours going up there. Honestly, guys, if I would do it again, I would sister these up and uh, put two two by fours there instead of just one uh, because they will bend back a little bit and bow. And that is why I have gone and reinforced it with angle iron going up. And then I just have crosswise two by fours going all the way up about where each of my rows will hit. And then I put a piece going across just to kind of shore it up to keep from being too flimsy. Again, all of that is held together by decking screws. Everything, I just use decking screws that holds it together just fine. Um, so don't forget your slow moving vehicle uh, sign on the back of all of them, which you can see I have again. I put them at about the same height or the same side of each back rack just to give it a uniform professional look. And then I also put uh, a reflector on the back just because I have had to pull these at night or dusk and you want to be sure people can see you. My little baby John Deere wagon has a different style of bracket and I'll just show you what it has so you can see something else. It looks like it has some kind of a, a C channel that's been welded to a plate and then the two by four just drops down into that. 
I do not have any cross bracing going across the front or back of my beams. You could do that if you wanted to. I haven't really seen the need to. So finally, about the last thing it comes down to is what do you treat the deck of these with if you, uh, you know, want to keep them from rotting faster. Um, you can use wood stain, you can paint them. I've tried a couple things too, some work, some didn't. Um, I've tried putting asphalt tar on here with sand in it. It honestly didn't last very long and just came off. Um, um, I also will take a paint roller and roll old motor oil on them. It so the wood soaks the oil up really fast and um, I don't know, it soaks it up, it doesn't get into the hay. <laughs> you can't see on the other side of the camera, but there's literally this idiot. He's back, he's like pushing against the backside of the camera. Um, and he's real muddy because it's spring and he likes to get in the mud and just roll all the way around. I call him Dopey. His name's Rainy, but I call him Dopey. He's old and he's just kind of dopey. Well, that's about enough uh, of me for the day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.